Okay, thanks everybody for, uh, for joining us today. You know, when I ran for governor, I promised Oklahomans that I would sign every piece of pro-life legislation that hit my desk. And I am thrilled to have kept that promise. I'm proud to be called America's most pro-life governor. And today, we are here to celebrate a lot of hard work. And I want to personally thank the legislature for their commitment uh, to, to being pro-life and protecting the life of the unborn in Oklahoma. I especially want to thank Attorney General John O'Connor. John O'Connor has truly been fighting this fight for his entire career. When the 6-3 decision was handed out today, John O'Connor wasted no time. His swift action to certify Section 861 banned abortion in our state immediately. It is my hope that the rest of America will follow Oklahoma's lead. With that, I want to turn it over to Attorney General John O'Connor. Well, this is a huge day uh, for Americans and certainly for those who believe that life begins at conception. As you know, since the 1973 Roe versus Wade decision, over 60 million American children have not seen the light of day. That makes this Supreme Court decision the, the most life-saving decision in the history of our nation. The importance of this decision cannot be overstated. I want to give you uh, uh, just a short summary in, in in Roe versus Wade, the United States Supreme Court concluded that the Constitution had a right to an abortion in the Constitution. In the decision that was released this morning, the United States Supreme Court said, the, this is a quote, the Constitution makes no reference to abortion, and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. So this is not only a victory for unborn children. This is a victory for everybody who believes in our system of government, a system where the people speak through their elected representatives. And major policy decisions are made by our, our legislatures and our Congress. In this instance, the decision over abortion or pro-life uh, policies will be made at the state level. This decision does not ban abortion in the United States. It leaves it to every state to decide whether abortion will be in, uh, illegal in that state. And the people of Oklahoma have decided through their elected leaders and the governor signed uh, legislation making abortion illegal in the state of Oklahoma from the moment of conception, except in the instance of to saving uh, the life of the mother. And remember that in the Oklahoma law, uh, this, uh, there is no punishment for the mother. There is no criminal punishment. There is no civil exposure for the mother. It's for the people who aid or abet or solicit abortion. Going back to Oklahoma Territory, in 1890, there was a ban on abortion in this part of the country. Then in 1910, three years after we became a state, a law was passed banning abortions, they called it miscarriages at the time, but it's been construed to mean abortions in the state of Oklahoma, except to save the life of the mother. So this, um, the legislature this year, as you know, passed uh, an abortion and a pro-life bill that says that abortions are not allowed from the moment of conception, except to, life, to save the life of the mother. So. Uh, Oklahoma is indeed the most pro-life state in the nation. And we hope that, that other states will follow our lead and that other states like Oklahoma 
will take care of women who are in a crisis pregnancy, that we as a state, as social services agencies, as good neighbors, as, our, as church members, will make provision for the, the medical, the physical, the emotional needs of the woman in a crisis pregnancy and her child. And we hope that the rest of the nation takes that as uh, a message that makes sense. The answer to a crisis pregnancy is to care for the mother and to care for the baby in the womb. The womb is now, in Oklahoma, the safest place for a child to be. Um, so, with that, um, we'll uh, turn it, I guess, uh, Mr. Go or Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Or we'll take questions. Well, let me say this, that since this morning and since we certified the legislation, uh, the, the U.S. Supreme Court decision to our state legislature, which the law had said uh, in the event that the attorney general certifies that Roe and Casey have been overturned, then these laws will go into effect. So that certification I signed and sent this morning. And so as of this morning, um, abortions performed in Oklahoma or solicited in Oklahoma are illegal. Well, I would say if you put up a billboard or if you advertise that, uh, that you're going to provide abortions uh, in Oklahoma or in another state, that you're soliciting an abortion. Uh, so... Yeah. So, so really, that's, that same question can be answered with respect to every law. The question was, um, how can we get the DAs and law enforcement on the same page? And uh, we'll do that the way we do everything else. The laws go out. The, the sheriffs and the police chiefs read those laws. Their district attorneys and their city attorneys read those laws. And then they can, re they can call the attorney general's office. We'll help them understand those laws. But, but Oklahoma's law is very clear now. And so uh, law enforcement is now activated with respect to uh, any efforts to aid, abet, or solicit abortions. Yeah, I, this, uh, that is a great question. And, and in my opinion, that's a policy question. Right now, the law does not ban contraception. The law picks up from, from uh, uh, fertilization. And uh, so, so uh, but the question of whether it will get anywhere else is a question of policy for the legislature. We'll enforce the law that they pass and that the governor signs. Yeah, no, no, not at all. This doesn't affect contraception or uh, fertility treatments or anything like that. Right. Not, not at this time. No. Yes, sir. You know, that's going to be a construction. The question is, what is the meaning of aid and abet? And I would direct you to the, uh, the statute or other law uses of the phrase aid and abet for some guidance on that. Yeah, I, I would say uh, a private company that facilitates or funds an abortion in Oklahoma is violating the law. That's right. Yeah, 
Yes, I think, I, I'm not sure, I think it may be August the 20th, yeah, it's August the 26th when Senate Bill 612 takes effect. Until that time, we'll be under section, under uh, 21 OS 861. Uh, but then that bill will take effect with its increased penalties. Yeah, I, at this point, I really can't get into that level of detail, but I'll tell you that there are four laws that are repealed by my certification today. Uh, and one of them, which uh, one of them actually criminalized uh, for or had punishments for the, the mother. Uh, that law was repealed today when we when the Supreme Court entered that decision and I certified its effect. So so the one law that had a uh, uh, that could be construed to punish the mother has been a repealed effective this morning. No, I think, I, I can't answer that, I don't know. I would say, yeah, my understanding would be that it's 43, 27 until uh, until 612 takes effect in, in August. And I don't know, is that? 4327 is a criminal. Yeah. Are they both in effect now? Yeah, so now with the U.S. Supreme Court removing the impairment to our state laws, both 4357 and 612 are in effect, one having criminal penalties and one having civil penalties. So. So the impediment of Roe versus Wade and Casey uh, is removed, and now the people, speaking through their elected representatives, get to determine what the policy of Oklahoma is instead of some unelected, lifetime appointed judges. Long and short of it is they're in effect. Yep, anybody else? Yes, ma'am, what? A civil case is a case where the statute gives civil penalties to people who are involved in the abortion. And it's not the mother, but anybody else involved. Civil penalties are dollar, dollar signs uh, and certainly injunctive relief. Yes, sir. You know, I'll, I'll look into the facts of anything like that and then examine whether it's violative of the law. I don't want to speak uh, right now ahead of being educated on what the terms of those benefits might be. And I'm not sure that's a benefit. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, I think... You know, privacy was certainly one of the grounds for Roe versus Wade. And I would think that if they read the Dobbs decision, they might see that, that, uh, that, that that's been reviewed and I would say no longer applies. But, there, you know, the ACLU is invited to come in and, uh, and uh, challenge this. Yeah, I might have to defer to the secretary at that level of detail. I think you're referring to the $3 million that the governor has provided. That is still in place, and certainly we're working with this vendor to be effective, to be able to utilize all the funds effectively for that program. It's my understanding is they have been renewed and plan to be renewed. I think it had to do with just the, uh, enrolling and getting others to participate with them. As you know, that's a granting organization, um, and so there, there's other providers to be enrolled with that program. As you know, following the, the AG's certification, the health department being the licensing organization for all abortion facilities has taken action to revoke all those licenses and they're now invalid. 
and we're also making taking actions to repeal any of the administrative rules around the abortion process. So that's the action that the health department has taken today.